What's up everyone, it's Valentin Kosenko and today's video we'll be testing these three wide angle lenses for the Panasonic Lumix GH5 or other Micro Four Thirds cameras and test their capabilities in terms of vlogging. So we'll be comparing the field of view, the aperture or background blur as well as autofocus and image stabilization because I think that these are the most important factors when it comes to vlogging type videos like this one right here. So I'll be shooting everything on the Panasonic Lumix GH5 right here in 4K 10-bit 422 at 24 frames per second. And there's one small downside to all of this because I currently don't have any ND filters for all the lenses. So you might not see any natural motion blur and see that very weird stuttering effect. But to make the comparison as comparable as possible, I thought that I would do it this way. So yeah, enjoy this video. Okay, so right now I am shooting with the Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm at 10 mm with f1.7. And as you can see, I get some very nice background separation here due to that f1.7 aperture. And one great thing about this lens is the fact that the exposure does not change when you zoom in due to that constant f1.7 aperture. The other two lenses have f2.8 to 4, which means that as soon as you zoom in, your exposure gets a little bit darker, which is not the best for video. So this lens definitely wins in that category and it also wins in terms of background separation due to that large wide open aperture. I actually really think that the look you get with this lens is kind of nice because as you can see the background is very blurred right here and let me quickly check whether I'm in focus again. If you just use your thumb like I do right here you can easily autofocus once like that and your focus will not wobble or shift or hunt in the background which is very very nice. One thing to note here though is that this lens is actually the heaviest of the three and it weighs around 690 grams I think. The other two are around 300 grams so a lot lighter but it offers the most background separation in my opinion and it is also the best in terms of flow light performance. So now we'll make a quick walking test so that you guys can see how the IBIS inside of the camera actually performs with this lens because this lens is not stabilized so you're only getting the IBIS inside of the GH5 and there's no dual IS right here so it shouldn't perform as good as the 12 to 60 f 2.824 which does have image stabilization inside of the lens so it works together with the GH5 but let's see how this one will perform. So. I'll make a quick walking test again and yeah, what do you think about the field of view? I actually think that it's enough as long as you uh, push your hand out like this so that you can fill the frame and don't cut your head like this or like that. But you always have to make sure if you use manual focus that you uh, stay in the focus plane because f1.7 is pretty shallow compared to f2.8 with the other two lenses. Uh, so yeah. But I really dig this look and if you want a full frame experience inside of a Micro Four Thirds camera, this is probably as close as you can get. I mean, you can also get the 12mm f1.4, which should in theory offer even shallower depth of field, but I mean, it does not have any zoom, so this one is a lot more versatile. So now let's switch to autofocus and see how the autofocus on this lens performs. Okay, so now we're running with autofocus on the GH5 here and we're still using the 10 to 25mm f1.7 and I must say that I am not a big fan of the autofocus of the GH5 because it is still very unpredictable even after all of these updates. But take a look for yourself here. I'll try to stay in the focus plane as much as possible, but we'll make another test in just a second where I point the camera uh, towards something else and try and see how long it takes before it focuses back on me. Now it got me, I think. So yeah, we'll keep walking for a moment so that you guys have more of a repeatable test right here. One thing that I really gotta admit is that this lens is quite heavy for longer vlogging and right now my left hand is actually shaking quite a lot. So we're also testing the IBIS inside of the GH5 right now. And uh, if I take my right hand right here, which is a lot stronger than the camera shouldn't be shaking as much. But this is one thing you have to consider when you choose this lens for vlogging because it is more than double the weight of the other two lenses. If you have weak arms like me right here then you might struggle vlogging with this lens but it works. It definitely works and the look you get is very very nice indeed. Now we are using the Panasonic Leica 12-60mm f2.824 with dual IS which 
should in theory have the best image stabilization of the three lenses and it's also a lot lighter than the Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm f1.7 and I think it only weighs around 300 grams while the other Leica weighs around 690 grams or something so my hand thanks me for that right now but there's one downside to all of this is the aperture which is only f2.8 and also the 12 millimeters because as you can see the field of view is not as wide as with the other one and this might be a problem when it comes to vlogging because let me show you right here if I uh, stretch my arm as far out as I can then I fit inside of the frame but as soon as your arm gets tired from the weight you might come closer and if I come closer like this the focus plane will of course change and I won't be in the focus any longer and this might be a problem because if your hand gets weaker and you come closer to your face you won't be able to fit inside of the frame as you can see my head is actually cut and only if I stretch my arm out like this I fit inside of the frame so this one is actually quite hard to hold as well although the weight is a lot less because it's quite hard to fit inside of the frame but it honestly depends on your arms because i am not vlogging very often so my muscles are not very trained for that but you can definitely manage and the field of view is acceptable in my opinion and also this lens is another benefit because you have the longest range in terms of zooming so 12 to 60 mil is pretty good for a wide angle but also for shots where you cannot come any closer to a subject so this is definitely a very great versatile small little lens and now I've switched to the autofocus and I'll do another walking test with this lens and as I've said before this one should be the best in terms of image stabilization but make a picture for yourself here what do you guys think I'm still walking on the same path as I did with the other lens so it should be pretty comparable Yeah, was there any wobbling? Was the focus hunting or is it staying on my face? Right now I cannot really check on the small screen right here. So this is a blind test for me and not the most scientific that I've done so far. But I hope that it is still very helpful for you if you still haven't decided which of the lenses is the right one for you. So yeah, let me know what you guys think so far. Okay, so now I've swapped the lens again to the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 mm f2.8 to 4 and this lens has no image stabilization but it is the widest of the three lenses so as you guys can see the field of view on this one is just awesome because you get so much inside of the frame but the aperture is also an f2.8 to 4 so if you zoom in the aperture changes and your exposure gets darker which is unfortunate but this lens is only 300 grams in weight so it is just as light as the 12 to 60 mil f2.824 and yeah this is pretty nice for vlogging actually and as you can see you can even see my hand right here because it is very very wide angle just as I've said before this lens does not have any image stabilization so we are only using the Panasonic's IBIS system right now but how does it actually perform is there any wobbling in the corners due to the very wide angle right here in previous tests that I've done I have noticed that effect on the 10 mil and 12 mil lenses as well but here it should be the worst from what I can tell so far because the wider you get the more wobbly your corners get and if this introduces any motion sickness to you then this lens might not be the right one for you but I think that it's still a very good option for vlogging because it just gets so much in the frame which is pretty awesome by itself just as I've said the lens has no OIS so we're only depending on the Panasonic's IBIS system right now but the wider your lens is the less you have to rely on something like IBIS because it just shakes a lot less naturally so yeah or at least you don't notice the shakiness as much as with a telephoto lens for example one more category I'd like to talk about that I've forgotten to talk about in the beginning is actually price because these lenses have very different price categories and this one right here the Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 mm f2.824 is in around the 1000 euro category and this is right in the middle and I think that the 12 to 60 mm f2.824 
is a little bit cheaper than that. I think a couple hundred euros less. And the Panasonic Leica 10 to 25 mm with the f 1.7 constant aperture is the most expensive of the three and costs around 1,800 euros, I think. So yeah, it is definitely a very expensive lens. So now let's change to the autofocus so that you guys can see how this lens performs in terms of autofocus. Once again, I am using continuous autofocus with face tracking activated. And yeah, how does it perform? Is there any hunting? And how do you like the image stabilization so far? And also let's focus on something else and then back on me. While testing these three lenses I kind of noticed that this one right here is, I don't know, it feels the lightest and also I don't have to focus as much on the field of view because so much uh, fits in the frame which is kind of awesome because with the other lenses you have to uh, be aware of the fact that if you come closer then uh, you might be too close to the lens and your head will be cut like that but with this one I can hold it pretty close so I don't have to put so much energy into my arm right here and it still works you know and then the IBIS system of course does not have to compensate so much due to the wide angle and because it's so easy to hold compared to the Leica 10 to 25 mm f 1.7 but that's it for this video if you still have any further questions then please let me know in the comments down below other than that I really hope you enjoyed watching that video and I hope to see you in the next one Bye.